Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for checking out this installment of Hanson Math Videos. This selection today is all about polynomials. Here we go. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about classification. If you watched my previous video, we talked a lot about monomials. Monomials are like this guy right here. It's just a single term consisting of numbers and letters or a coefficient and variables, if you will. So this guy is a monomial. Mono means one. Um, you'll notice that there's no addition or subtraction in here. In contrast to the next guy, this is a monomial plus another monomial. When you have this situation, this is called a binomial, the prefix bi, of course, indicating two. It's basically two monomials. And then you can proceed to a trinomial. Here you have three terms, one, two, three. These are all combined with addition. They could be combined with subtraction. That's perfectly fair. Again, since this has three terms, this is called a trinomial. Once you get past trinomial, which is three, uh, you stop applying a specific name. These are just general polynomials. This is a four-term polynomial. So I would just call this a general polynomial once you exceed three terms. Okay. So there's a little bit of vocabulary. Monomial, binomial. We talk a lot about this guy, a binomial. Very common to work with in algebra, a two-term polynomial as well as the three-term trinomial. The others, not as common, but you will work with them. Okay, next. When you work with polynomials, sometimes you have to combine like terms. Now, the variable complement must be identical or else you cannot combine. In the first example, you have three of an x squared y term and six of an x squared y term. Since they're both amounts of x squared y, you can combine. You can. So there's three of them and six of them. That means nine. And what are they? They're called x squared y. In the next example, you have amounts of a, b. You have two, then take away eight, then add five. Two take away eight is negative six. Negative six plus five you're still at negative 1 and you are counting groups of AB. The negative 1, the 1 is not necessary but you do need the negative so you could just call it negative AB. Next we have negative 10 of XY plus 2Y minus 20XY. Notice all three terms are not like here. XY matches with this XY this positive 2y is a different term. It cannot be combined with the amounts of xy. So first I'll combine our xy stuff. We have negative 10xy and then down yonder we have minus 20. You lose 10 and you lose 20 more. That's a loss of 30xy. And then there's nothing else, there's no other y's to combine this with. So we just recopy our plus to y. And then in the, in the fourth example here, what we have to do is we have to distribute this negative. This is a subtraction problem, but everything in the second parentheses is being subtracted. So the subtraction applies here, the subtraction applies here, and the subtraction applies here. So we have 4x squared minus x squared brings us down to 3x squared. We have a negative 3x minus 2 more x, which is minus 5x. And then we have minus a negative 1. Minus a negative is the same as plus, so this is plus 1. Okay. We can also multiply polynomials, and depending on what you're given, there's different ways to accomplish this. Um, the first thing we're going to do here is just a simple multiplication, or what's called using the distributive property. 
You probably have already encountered this, so we're just going to look at one example. If you have a monomial outside the parentheses and you have stuff inside the parentheses, whatever's outside the parentheses has to multiply or distribute to everything inside the parentheses. Nothing can be left out. So if we do this here, 3x times 5x to the fourth power is 15x to the fifth. 3x times negative x cubed is negative 3x to the fourth. And then 3x times 4x is 12x squared. Now, if you need any help reviewing exponential properties, I do have a video that regards that you might want to check out first. Okay, this brings us to a heavy hitter in the area of multiplying polynomials. A binomial times a binomial. So if you look here, you have a plus b. That's a binomial because of the two terms. And we're going to multiply that to c plus d, which is a binomial of two terms. Now, as long as everything multiplies to everything else, you're cool. So if this a multiplies to the c and the d, and the b multiplies to the c and the d, you're good. But there's a method that just helps you be organized. There's nothing magical or special about it. And sometimes I think it's kind of goofy calling it the FOIL method because that gives it um, more respect than it deserves. It's just the distributive property, but it's a way to be organized. So let's try that with the next examples. Now, again, this FOIL, as we call it, which I'll explain what it stands for in just a second, it works for binomials. That's when you have two terms multiplied by two terms. Okay, The F in FOIL stands for the first, so you multiply the first terms in each parentheses. So it would be this guy and this guy. So x times x is x squared. Now, O stands for outside. The outside terms are the furthest apart, this one and this one. If we multiply together, x times 12, we get positive 12x. Next, we'll look at the inside terms. The inside terms are the ones closest together. They're almost touching in the middle. Those are your inside terms. If you multiply those in this example, 8 times x is positive 8x. And then finally, L stands for last. That's the last term or the second term in each parenthesis, which namely in this one you have 8 times 12, which is a positive 96. Now, you do have to check for combining like terms, and it's often going to be the outside and the inside that have the same variable. They're like terms. So in this guy here, we have our x squared. And the 12x plus the 8x can be combined because they're both amounts of x. 12 plus 8 gives us, tw ah, sorry about that, 20x. And then we have to recopy down our 96. So there's your final answer. x squared plus 20x plus 96. Okay, we'll try it again for this binomial times binomial. Foil first, outside inside last. First, 4n times 3n is 12n squared. Outside, 4n times 1 is positive 4n. Inside, 3 times 3n is 9n. And last, 3 times 1 is 3. Again, you have like terms here in the middle. So we have 12n squared 4n plus 9n is 13n, and recopy the plus 3. Hopefully this is going well thus far, but we do have some more examples for additional mastery. At this point in the lesson, you very well may want to hit pause and grab a paper and pencil and work these ahead and see what you can do. Um, if not, you can work right along with me and keep watching. 
we're going to pick up the pace a little bit. Okay, binomial times binomial, so we're going to try FOIL. So we have 3y squared times negative 5y is negative 15y cubed. Outside, 3y squared times positive 1 is positive 3y squared. Inside, negative 2 times negative 10y is positive 10y. And then last, negative 2 times positive 1 is minus 2. Now, notice in this case, you have an amount of y cubed, y squared, plain y, and a constant. Nothing can be combined here. This is your final answer because there are no like terms or like variables. Next, 2x minus 3 quantity squared. Now, this one is very interesting because students have a habit of looking at this and saying, well, okay, we'll square the 2x and that'll be 4x squared and we'll square the minus 3, which will be 9, and you're done. Well, not so fast. That's not how this works at all. Remember what the concept of squaring means. Squaring means multiplying something by itself. So what you really have to do is you have to expand this. So you have the following. You have 2x minus 3 times itself. 2x minus 3. Well, now you have a binomial times a binomial. So once again, we can use the FOIL method to distribute or multiply this sucker out. First, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Outside, 4x times minus 3 is negative 6x. Inside, same thing. Negative 3 times 2x is another negative 6x. And last, negative 3 times negative 3, positive 9. We do have these middle terms here to combine because they're like. So we have 4x squared. A loss of 6x and a loss of 6 more x is a total loss of 12x. And then plus 9, there is your final answer. More examples yet to come. Um, this one's interesting. This is a binomial times a binomial. And notice that the quantities are the same, except here you have positive, here you have negative. Okay, this will cause the outside and the inside terms to drop out, as you will see. Foil x times x for the first, x squared. Outer terms, x times minus 9, negative 9x. Inside terms, 9 times x is positive 9x. Last, uh, I'm sorry, positive 9 times negative 9 is minus 81. Now, you'll see here that with the x variable, you have negative 9 of x and positive 9 of x. Those cancel out. So you're left with x squared minus 81. x squared minus 81 is called the difference of two squares. Once you get into factoring, you will see that. It's called the difference of two squares. Probably don't, don't need to know that right now, but it will come up when you get to what's called factoring. Okay, just a couple more examples here. Here we have a binomial times a binomial times a binomial. Sometimes students get freaked out when they see this for the, for the first time, but there's no need to get upset. You just work at it in phases. So what you do first is you multiply the first binomial times the second. Don't even worry about this guy right here, this x minus 4. We'll get to him in a second. Foil out these two. First, x times x, x squared. Outside, x times 1. 1x. Inside, 2 times x, 2x. Last, 2 times 1, 2. Combine the like terms, so we have x squared plus 3x plus 2. Slap this guy in parentheses. Hey, look, now it's a trinomial. 1, 2, 3. Well, we're almost done with our multiplication, but we can't forget about this guy. Drag it down, keep it in parentheses, and multiply. Well, how do you do this? Well, it's not going to be fo FOIL, per se, because it's not 2 by 2. This is a trinomial, 3 terms, times a binomial 2. Just grab the first term and multiply it to both of the guys over here. So we have x squared times this x 
is x cubed, and x squared times minus 4, which is negative 4x squared. Now, that's done because it got distributed to everything over here. Now, let's start with the 3x. 3x times x is positive 3x squared, and 3x times minus 4 is negative 12x. That's done. It got used up. So now that leaves us with 2 times x. I'm going to put that right here because it lines up with the x stuff. And then 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Okay, finish up, combine like terms. You have x cubed. You have a negative 4x squared and a plus 3x squared. That's a minus 1 x squared. You have a negative 12x plus you get 2x back, so you're still missing negative 10x, and then drag down your minus 8. Okay? It might seem like doing a lot, but once you get into the hang of things, it's not bad at all. One more example to finish up here. Here we have k plus 3 in parentheses times k squared plus 3k plus 9. Very much like the prior example where you have two terms here, a binomial, and three here, a trinomial. Well, just grab a term and multiply it to everything over here. Do that first. k times k squared, k cubed. k times 3k, 3k squared. k times 9, 9k. Okay, that's done. It got used up. 3 times k squared. That's another 3k squared. I'm going to line it up like this so the k squareds are aligned. 3 times 3k, 9k. And then finally, 3 times 9, 27. Now, everything's aligned by powers. The cubes, the squares, the first power, and the constant. So now I have k cubed plus 3k squared and 3 more k squared is 6k squared, 9k and 9k, 18k, and bring down the positive 27, and that is a wrap. This one is all set. I want to thank you very much for checking out HansonMath.com math videos. Thank you, and you can look forward to the next installment, which is Division of Polynomials. Thanks a lot.